Hey folks, coming up next on Cruising with the Coaches, a conversation with Julian Lee, we talk about what it's going to look like, what it feels like, and the kind of compassion and empathy you have to have as we start to come out of this pandemic and get back to what life is going to look like. Stay tuned because that conversation is coming up next. Our priority at Blue Monarch Communications is building your confidence as an effective presenter. Whether you are preparing for a formal presentation, a keynote address, an interview, or presenting an idea or concept to your team or your clients, we are here to ensure that you are poised to effectively communicate your content while engaging and connecting with your audience. Let our team help you shine. Hey folks, this is Lee Grigsby here, health and life coach and founder of Live All Good Coaching. I'll be on the air with the podcast Business News Network talking about the various things around health and wellness and mental health. Also talking about how mindset is critical to achieving the goals that you set for yourself. You can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, liveallgood.com, and fill out the contact form and reach me there. Once again, that's liveallgood.com. Go to the About section, fill out the contact form, or you can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. Hey folks, welcome back from that short break. This is the latest episode of Cruising with the Coaches. You are here with your best, best co-hosts, Lee and Julie. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you, Julie? How's everything going? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, you know, before we get into today's topic, I just want to point out there, I'm not sure if um, people paid attention to a certain basketball game a couple nights ago, but it was it, it, a, a very prominent coach is retiring from NCAA basketball. And there is one of the best rivalries in college basketball Absolutely. that has been going on for years. And I just, I just want to make sure that people understand the historic moment of the team that actually won the game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> There's only I, one K. I, 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 <laughs> I saw your post and I cracked up. So, <laughs> so I just want to let our listeners know that, uh, yes, we bleed Tar Heel Blue. Yes, we do. And it was you know, we, we give uh, all due respect and all, all props to uh, Coach, K. Coach K because, Absolutely. you know, he, good, good coach, great coach. Um, but yeah, it's not lost on us about the historic win. And that will be a trivia question that will go down in history. <laughs> who was who the team that won and beat Coach K in his final game at Cameron Indoor <laughs> Stadium? And it is our beloved Tar Heels. Yes, it is. <laughs> love it, love it. So, so yeah, okay. Enough gloating, I guess, right? You know, <laughs> that's not fair. But folks, um, we we're we're coming into the spring months, man. We're starting to thaw out a little bit for those of us who've had cold temperatures or or winter temperatures. And there's another important thing that has happened over the last few days many of the regions and states uh in here in the u.s have begun to drop certain mandates or protocols for masks um and i haven't really kept up with 
some of the other countries around the world about what their mandates are doing, what their protocols are. But that's kind of what we want to address today. We want to kind of talk about just kind of what's going on, how you might feel about it, and how to really just manage. Um, we're still in some uncertainty. <laughs> right, right. And so that's important to, to kind of manage through that. Well, I mean, not to be funny, I think that was one mm-hmm. of the things that was so amazing, just even watching the game, not not to take it back to the game, but let's take it back to the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> just the energy, like remembering what NCAA was all about, you know, like just... I mean, obviously I have no no love for Duke in any way, shape, or form, but the energy of that Coliseum must have been just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, and, and you saw, I mean, there were people in every seat. I mean, mm-hmm. it was, I mean, there were some people who had masks on, there was some people who did not, but it was just amazing to revisit what watching those games was really like, you know, cause it was mm-hmm. hard. Last season was so hard watching it. It's the dead silence and, you know. Like, you can hear everything like on the court or. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, a lot of NFL teams said the same thing, right? When they were playing in these empty stadiums, right? Mm-hmm. And, and again, folks, we, before we even continue just on this train of thought, by no means are we trivializing, you know, the amount of tragedies and deaths oh, that have happened from COVID. Right, right, right. We're not trivializing that at all. Um, but yeah, going back to the, the sports, even the NFL teams would talk about the awkwardness of the silence, right? Correct. Or being Correct. able to literally hear the other team and the calls they were making. And it was just a very different thing. Um, and so you, like you pointed out in, in that game where some people were still masked, some people mm-hmm. weren't. Right. And and I think I, I want to mention, like, it's important to, I guess, take everybody or accept everybody where they are. Right. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes. It's very, very similar when we're talking about um, different ideologies and different, uh, you know, different theories of how people think it, it's I, I think it's important because there's enough information at least basic information we're Mm -hmm. not talking about you need to be a scientist and understand um mrna and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. but there's enough basic information that if you see someone who is choosing to wear a mask if it's in a public setting if it's in a small setting if it's in a private group um or the other way if you see someone without a mask Okay, I think we need to work on moving past judging what you're doing, right? And I know that that's an unpopular statement. I understand that that's unpopular because people look at it as an act of either selflessness or selfishness, right? Because again, the the whole masking thing was part of protection from this this virus from catching this thing correct so i mean i think oh go ahead well i i think it's just it it all stems from the fact that i mean no matter how anybody looks at it it was trauma to everyone everybody experienced trauma Mm -hmm. and so the fact of the matter is how you respond to that trauma is going to be differently than your neighbors okay Mm -hmm. so i mean and again, not to trivialize anything, but if you really, really think about it, um, if you go back to 9-11, do you remember, although it was something positive, mm-hmm. the first time you heard an airplane fly over the skies above you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and so it's just understanding that while some folks can embrace that because they've been waiting for normalcy, sure. there are other folks who, um, normalcy isn't normalcy for them it, you know it's, it's completely still, changed it's completely changed like they mm-hmm. they it's not easy for them to come back from that trauma mm-hmm. um their experience has been different i mean and that's the other thing respecting everybody's experience because absolutely you don't know what someone else has gone through through mm-hmm. the process 
um, just like you were talk talking about earlier, you know, with the whole um, not trivializing it, because the fact of the matter is, while I may have not lost someone close to me, mm -hmm. someone else could have lost four or five people very close to them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everybody's experience through this has been very, very different. Absolutely. And that's that's the point we're making, right? As you know, the, the officials and government, they're making decisions that I think they feel are, <laughs> and I know, again, probably an unpopular opinion, mm -hmm. but they're making choices and decisions that they think are best for what they're looking at, for Correct. the for the data they're looking at, for- or for the majority. Right, for the majority of, of people's mental health. I'm not sure why they're making that decision. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to second guess it. What I'm also encouraging people to do is, again, we're in a, a bit different time in 2022 than we were in 2021 or even in 2020. In 2020. So now you have a bit more information on what you can do to best protect yourself and those in your inner circle or a few circles out, right? Correct. And you should not feel shamed if that's what you want to do, right? Correct. So again, I go to the gym, they have, and, and it was funny, we were talking about this pre-show. Um, the I went, I went to the gym literally the day before the mask mandate was dropped. And again, everybody's at the gym, they got the signs up there, right before you come up the steps, don't have, everybody has a mask on or you can't come in. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the day after I went to the gym and it was about 50% or so of people who still have masks, mm -hmm. some who didn't. Then fast forward at the end of the week, it was probably about a third. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. again, I, I, I get it because everybody also has a different risk tolerance, right? Correct. Correct. And so it's a, it's, let's go back pre-COVID. Even going to the gym is a calculated risk. <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest <laughs> let's just be real not Going everybody's to... spraying down that equipment I'm just exactly <laughs> exactly so i i think for so long that we got comfortable with and i'm using air quotes folks just with how everyday life was okay mm -hmm. yep. not not really taking into account the amount of calculated risk that it was on public transportation or being in a small setting with, you know, 20, 30, 50 people, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So now that we're starting to move to the other side of the pandemic, ho hopefully turning, well, not hopefully, but becoming endemic, right? Mm -hmm. Something that's going to be here. Right. Now it really is about best practice, right? Yep. And what you feel comfortable with. So that's, that's just the encouragement we want to give you. If wearing a mask is what makes you comfortable and that's the best protection you feel for yourself, then do that, right? right? Right. And if that's what you want the rest of your family members to do, then do that. If there are people who are out and about and choosing not to mask in different situations, hey, you know what? It's no need to judge them. Like we said, like Julie, like you said earlier, everybody's going to react to this differently. Correct. And Correct. it affected everyone differently. So mm -hmm. let's actually show compassion or understanding or just acceptance. Right. 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 And also because everyone, even with whether it's masks or no masks, everybody mm -hmm. still has a different way of responding to people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think you just have to get back into that place where while it may not be fun um asking for consent i mean i don't know any other way to say it you know mm -hmm. like if you come across somebody just because they don't have a mask on doesn't mean that they are open to receiving hugs or even handshakes you know so like i've gotten into the practice of i want to hug you am i allowed to hug you and then the person <laughs> says yes and then we hug 
So it's not like, I'm not just going to reach out and just grab mm-hmm. you because the last thing I need is someone looking at me like, oh my God, are you touching me? Like, what are you doing? Like, like, and so I don't right. want, I, w- I wouldn't want anyone to feel rejected simply because they didn't like, you know, pause for a second before they went forward with, you know, whatever emotion that they were feeling at the time. Because I think that's the other thing is we're so excited about seeing each other now that mm-hmm. we are not all always thinking that, okay, the person in the mask doesn't want to be touched. Well, not necessarily. They're just saying, I, you know, like this I'm protecting is what I'm myself. choosing to do. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so um, being okay with having that, again, it always back, it goes back to communication, being okay <laughs> with saying, yeah. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. And I, if it's okay, I'm coming in for a hug, you know, and most people Absolutely. are like, I'm cool. I'm cool. Or you'll get, I have gotten where someone's like, well, actually I'm going to be visiting blah, 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 blah. And mm-hmm. I would prefer, and it's like, okay, I totally get it. You know? And that's or, fair respecting someone's yes, decision. I yes, love that. You're, yes. you're so right about that. And um, not taking it personal. Just, it's, it's not about you. It's mm-hmm. about them protecting themselves and there's nothing wrong with it. Right. It, it's not a reflection on you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Not a reflection yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, why don't we take a break here? since uh, we'll let everybody kind of digest um, thinking about accepting <laughs> again, <laughs> digest that, understand what that's going to look like. And when we come back, we'll, we'll talk more about, you know, how to manage through protocols. Those of you who have uh, kids, schools, we'll, we'll kind of talk about those things when we come back after the break. <laughs> Hey folks, this is Lee Grigsby here, health and life coach and founder of Live All Good Coaching. I'll be on the air with Podcast Business News Network talking about the various things around health and wellness and mental health. Also talking about how mindset is critical to achieving the goals that you set for yourself. You can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com, or you can go to my website, liveallgood.com, and fill out the contact form and reach me there. Once again, that's liveallgood.com. Go to the About section, fill out the contact form, or you can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. Our priority at Blue Monarch Communications is building your confidence as an effective presenter. Whether you are preparing for a formal presentation, a keynote address, an interview, or presenting an idea or concept to your team or your clients, we are here to ensure that you are poised to effectively communicate your content while engaging and connecting with your audience. Let our team help you shine. All right, folks, welcome back from the break. That was, um, you know, our, our first segment was about accepting people and communicating. Seems like we talk about that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like seems like we're broken record, but you know yes. it's true. It's true. Um, so Julie, I just wanted to to drop a, a few examples because uh, I know we both have kids and and we deal with schools and what that looks like. Before uh, I talk about what what school or at least what our school looks like, wanted to mention this for folks. Uh, yes, the the mask mandates have been dropped, right? Correct. But this this might be important too. There's a difference between saying the mask mandate has been dropped and then still saying it's suggested. You see, right. it's not like anyone is saying, oh, this is over and no mask and go back to things the way they were. That's not what's being said. Right. But now that there are so the... Uh, the mitigations are are really a lot better than they were before. I mean, still, yeah, obviously, 
I even hate to say this basic thing, washing your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Like I don't shouldn't... know, hygiene 101. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, shouldn't have to repeat that. But but some <laughs> of the basics, right? You know, um, some of the social distancing. Okay, maybe it's not six feet, but being aware of those things, right? Okay. Understanding people's personal boundaries. I even want to suggest this too. I know in the, the last segment you were talking about, you know, it's okay to ask somebody like, hey, you know what? I haven't seen you in two years. I, I, I want to like, hug yeah. you. <laughs> And they're like, yes, I want to hug you too. Okay, cool. Right? Right, right. And there's going to be those awkward moments where you're like handshake, hug, uh, elbow, what do you do? Right? I mean. Right, right. It's okay. Laugh at those, right? Yeah. Have fun yes. with it. Don't don't be awkward. And I will say this. This was um, actually last summer. But uh, there was a, another uh, family from my daughter's school and we were getting together uh, before school, right? Just to, to meet each other, the, our daughters or friends. And I said, and I, I texted him or emailed him and I was like, hey, I hope I don't offend, but are you vaccinated? Right? Okay. I only, and, and I asked that question because I don't really care if he's vaccinated right. or not. It's not my business, but it would allow me to know what I need to do or not do bidding on the answer you see just right. just like asking someone hey can i hug you or can i shake your hand right which in essence makes sense a year ago with the information that we had mm -hmm. you know what i mean but like now mm -hmm. whether like if you yourself are vaccinated you really don't need to be fearful of whether someone else is vaccinated or not but exactly. given the information that you were you had a year ago that makes sense right so. and that's so that's what i'm pointing out right that's where we were so now the mitigations have changed a bit. The strategies have changed. Right. If you, and, and hopefully if you are one of those folks who got vaccinated and boosted and believes in that thing, mm -hmm. then that's how you feel is the best way to protect yourself and your family and right. people around you. If you don't believe in that, I hope you are taking some type of precautions, precautions. That, that are medically sound. <laughs> Correct. Because there are there's so much misinformation that has been out for so long. And I would hate any of our listeners to say, oh man, you know, yeah, Julie and Lee were talking about uh, you know, the protocols and the mask mandates, and yeah, you don't have to worry about this. Well, no, it's <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's still something to be uh cognizant of, right? Right, right. And and again, we're not here to judge you if you're not vaccinated, not taking the vaccine, getting boosted. But we also want to encourage you to follow some sound medical practice, Correct. right? Right. Because there are plenty of people who, who don't want to take a vaccine. Fine. I don't want to see you having a diet of fast food for five days in a row either. <laughs> if you don't, if you have a problem with what's going into your body. Right. There's, there's a, a certain way that you should be going about other things too. <laughs> just Which just want to yeah go ahead not that I was ever a big handshaker mm -hmm. in the in the past you know like I'm a hugger I'm a hugger and mm -hmm. I mean that was a very difficult thing for me during this whole process was mm -hmm. the thought of not being able to hug someone absolutely um but so I think that's why I made it more of more of a conscious effort to find a way like to hug people because it's like I, I I can't be without this anymore I need this in my life right, but I right. will tell you when people go out to shake my hand I just like kind of like do the nod like how are you like I'm still very right. I'm weird I'm weird about handshaking I I admit it I own it and it I don't I hope it goes away but I don't <laughs> know that it will I mean it's just I don't know I mean, hey, but but you but you've acknowledged it, right? Like that's yes, the thing. Yes, it's, it it wasn't a it wasn't a COVID thing. It's just you're not a handshaker. You're no, no, no. I was a handshaker before. Oh, before. Okay. No, I was a handshaker. I mean, it wasn't. You know, I I did. No, but it, it, yeah, but I know what you mean. I'm more of a hugger. Mm -hmm, but like mm -hmm. now, I'm yeah. like I'm I'm a little more um <laughs> I'm a little more cautious with putting my hand out to well to and you know what and that's fair right fair. that's that's yeah. kind of what we're talking about that's fair yeah. because 
it affected everybody differently. Differently, exactly. So then I have to tell the person, it's not you, it's me, I promise. It's not or, you. or you just say, yeah, no, no handshake, <laughs> but come on in. Come in for yeah, a hug. Yeah, right, in. right, come in for a hug, which makes absolutely no sense. And, but and then, I mean, and then it they'll makes say, sense oh, to me. Then, well, I'm not a hugger, I'm a handshaker. I'm not a hug- like, All right, <laughs> rock. <laughs> Let's rock well, it we'll, out. We'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, man. But so I think I think this the way this looks at schools too, right? I got to give principals and teachers. Uh, me saying giving them all the credit is not nearly enough, because I know that how do you manage that, right? How do you manage something changing every day? How do you manage having to pivot um, <laughs> within hours or days or? Oh yeah, we're in person this week. Oh no, we're remote. Oh, we're right. Just, we're the- oh my gosh. How do you That's manage like, that? My calendar now is like <laughs> I try to read I try to make an effort mm-hmm. to really pay attention to whether it's an in-person meeting or a Zoom meeting. Because <laughs> I'll put two meetings back to back and I'm like, oh crap, this one's in person. <laughs> I gotta get my butt over there. Right. And I've right. got like 10 minutes, you know, and it's just like, oh my gosh. But it is, it's it's such it's- an adjustment. It's a new world, man. So yeah, I, I I think, you know, giving it as adults and as parents, I think modeling that acceptance that we've been talking about, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because what's the worst thing? Middle school, high school, well, even the younger kids, right? Maybe, maybe the younger kids, not so much. But once you start getting into middle school and high school, there's already enough pressure for them to fit in, right? Right. For them to start forming these these friend groups. And one day somebody is is outcast the next day they're back in the group. Right. Because of whatever. Right. It would be it would be, I think, detrimental if the mask shaming, although I've heard stories of it already happening. Right. Of course. Of course. But yeah, that's what we're saying, too. Like, if you are able to model it, they're going to pick up on that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's going to make even this transition for school through this last bit before the summer, that's going to help the transition, I think, you know, right. maybe some kids are going to be masked, maybe some aren't, it doesn't matter, it's not this whole scarlet letter thing that I've heard people right. talking about, you know, right. it's not like you've got something, but everybody's going to do something different, and that's- well, I'm going- Going back to what you were talking about, the little kids, though, because the little mm-hmm. kids did have like really weird or actually, well, I hate saying weird, but mm-hmm. different situations, because you got to remember, you know, when you were in kindergarten or second grade or third grade, like that's mm-hmm. when you started to have the birthday parties with your classmates, you know. Mm-hmm. So if you have a mm-hmm. first grader who is now a fourth grader, a third mm-hmm. grader going into fourth grade, they miss that. You know, yeah. and so they're like the, the social. I don't know the social. No, you're the social interaction. There's yes, their social oh, interaction yeah. is so different. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's amazing to watch because you'll see what you think a third grader should not be reacting to someone coming and approaching them is like what a kindergartner or first grader would respond. Oh, and it's my just gosh. like really embracing and understanding okay Mm -hmm. don't treat that child just like you said as an outcast they're Mm -hmm. just adapting to what is now their normal which should have been all of our normal but it's not their normal right now oh my god it's just so hard to watch it it really you're 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 so right and this is maybe a side note or a little tangent but that is a you hit the nail on the head with that um I've, I've talked to quite a few teachers and that's probably the one thing that they said is the hardest thing to deal with right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, there's this, there's this push of, Oh, well, all the kids are going to be, uh, you know, a couple years behind educationally. Right. 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 But what I can tell you that they, they're not worried about that part. Educationally, you can make that up, you know, right. You can always, yeah. It's the social uh, uh, interactions, the social learning. Absolutely. Yep. And you, you, you perfectly played it out there that for two years, you know, what you typically would have learned socially, 
with right. other kids you were denied that or it was oh well right. there's two of you or you know kids being told no nope, you you have to be six feet away from each other exactly how many times did we see well before kids were like all over each other and all mm -hmm. it's a bundle right. of kids <laughs> right right <laughs> you know so so yeah the the and that's something that is hard to come back from you know exactly you're yeah. learning social skills at at the kindergarten first grade mm -hmm. level when you're nine you're that's, getting that socialization yeah man yeah. So yeah, and, and I guess I'm only bringing it up because I've watched my own nephew who actually just turned three years old, mm -hmm. and um, so he was a pandemic child. Okay, mm -hmm. so while he, not to say that he wasn't difficult in the beginning, because I mean every child's different, sure. but like he lost that period of like I had him all the time, you know, and right. he he you know we were to the point where he would stay the night, and then mm -hmm. we had to take that all back. You know, I'd stay the night there with him, mm -hmm. but like it wasn't him over here. And so I would have to say the change that I have seen with him, in him since his sister's been born, who is mm -hmm. now she's eight months old, mm -hmm. it's night and day. Like mm -hmm. he's, he still has a, he has to warm up to you when he, when you come to his, to his bubble, when you sure. enter his bubble, sure. he has to adjust. But for the most part, it's not as long of a period of time that you're waiting for him to warm up because now he has this other being in the house that he understands okay like this is what i have to do in order you know and it's yeah it's just amazing to watch it really really is and you the, seeing that social development the, mm -hmm. the it's yeah and that's that's development i think people miss you know exactly and, and, and start, like, start judging like you said don't judge them exactly so understand like as an the aunt, gap yeah. Yes. As an aunt, as a family member, as a grandparent who maybe didn't meet that baby when they were two days old, you know, like, let it go. <laughs> let it go and move forward as if all yeah. of it, whatever didn't happen, you know, because it, it is. It's, it's it an adjustment. It will eventually adjust again. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. Right. It, oh, man. Just, yeah. Just so I guess like the, the, what we're trying to say is go with the flow, right? Like be. Right flexible be able to adjust and, and also i think that triggers adults right because mm -hmm. we think of oh well it should be this way right yes right. we understood what was going on socially and that kind of thing they don't understand that yet you know right. the, especially the younger kids so again i think adults have to lead the way you know right with right. the acceptance with the compassion with the understanding just you know it, i think if you it, what, what what do we i know we've done this in several episodes right how would you want to be treated right 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 <laughs> so why not give that same grace to someone else exactly you know i just saw this somewhere i can't remember, can't remember what happened or what we were talking about or where it came from mm -hmm. but it was um, having a, a pot on a stove, boiling water. Mm -hmm. And the question was, do you want to be an egg, a potato or a coffee bean? <laughs> Have you heard that? Have I've you heard seen, of this? I've, I've seen this meme. It's great. Yeah, yes. Yes. And so, yes. you know, what, what yeah. happens when you put them all in the pot? Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, the potato turns to mush, the egg becomes hard <laughs> or the bean disappears and becomes completely fluid. Right. It's <laughs> And, you know, and and so I mean, I think that's what we have to learn is that we can't. Yeah. I don't know. We just gotta be chill. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. We we were all we were all in that same pot boiling together. Right? Yes. Yes. Dep depending on how you went in, although <laughs> I don't know, I would would I be a coffee bean or a potato? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or, or 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 do I need to peel my shell and maybe I was an egg? I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I don't make that. That's a great meme because that it illustrates the point, right? Yes, we were exactly. all in that same situation together, mm -hmm. and it affected everybody in a different way, right? Exactly. So, yep. folks, all we're all we're saying is, you know, take a step back, think about how you would want to be treated, and really start accepting people, right? We're yep. all human. We're all people. We all have feelings and emotions. 
no, that's not um, foreshadowing another episode. Maybe it I is. Think it was, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> but yeah, folks, it, like it, it, relax. We we understand that. Uh, yes, COVID is not over. My guess, my logical sense is that it's becoming endemic, not a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so let's now figure out how to help each other move forward, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, Julie, anything you want to leave our listeners with before we go? Be a coffee bean. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Love it. Be a coffee coffee bean. bean. Yes. Yes. Love it, you guys. <laughs> well, it has been another episode of Cruising with the Coaches, a conversation with Julian Lee. You can find us on Spotify, Google, Amazon, Apple, some other uh, podcast platforms. And we have enjoyed our time with you. Don't forget, be a coffee bean. And we will see you in a couple Wednesdays. See ya.